Hey, I'm Chris Buck, and I'm here at the Marshall Studio checking out the new vintage rear shoe pedals. First in line, literally and metaphorically for me, I guess, because this was the first one I got my hands on when I was way too young to fully appreciate what it actually was, is the Governor. Um, so growing up, I was a Marshall kind of devotee, to be honest. It was a JCM 800, um, a Les Paul, and anything in between was witchcraft, as far as I was concerned. Um, but this was one of the first pedals I got my hands on, and as far as I was concerned, I had the ability to turn any amp in the world into a JCM 800, so I was absolutely thrilled. Because suddenly I could sound exactly as I did in the Dog and Duck in uh, GCSE Music, which I'm sure the teachers were absolutely thrilled about. But um, Again, just absolutely nailed it. The issue sounds, you know, to my memory anyway, sounds exactly as the original did. Um, just has the ability to turn, well, clean tone. Into a bit of a roaring monster. Regardless of settings, pretty much all kind of not a million miles away from being straight up, I guess. Um, as with the original, I always kind of tended to dial the treble back a little bit on the governor, as I did with my JCM 800, to be honest. I think it was, um, it might as well have been snapped off for as much use as it actually got on the JCM 800. It was always pretty much off and just kind of compensating with a little bit of presence or an abundance of mids. And that's pretty much how I've got it here, to be honest. Everything's pretty much at 12 o'clock, save for some subtle tweaks either way, I guess. But um, it's just, does exactly what I remember really, which is make any amp raw. So that's quite exciting to see that back in pedal form. Um, in regard to the Blues Breaker, I think that was kind of where my history with these pedals, I guess for me is kind of most prominent. Amazingly, um, for the first and last time in my life, I kind of got in on something before the hype kind of exploded really. I remember paying 30 pounds for one, I think on eBay. Used it religiously for years for all of its kind of many idiosyncrasies. It's just a very cool sounding pedal. And you know, for me at least that was, strap and blues breaker into a clean amp. That was my kind of thing for years, to be honest. So um, yeah, excited to see that coming back. Um, in regard to settings, uh, the gains by two o'clock. Tone, pretty much as I always set it, was about kind of straight up midday. And then volume, a little bit of a bump um, at about three o'clock. So clean. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Drive Master. Now, this actually is my first experience with this pedal, to be honest. Really intrigued by it. Um, again, just kind of seems to have the capacity to turn anything into a little bit of a kind of roar in Marshall, um, as you would expect, really, from the name on the front of it. So, um, clean tone. <laughs> One thing I think which has been particularly uh, cool about all of them, but I guess is particularly noticeable on the pedals where kind of dial it in a little bit more gain, is just their capacity to be able to clean up. Roll the volume back on your guitar, you've got kind of approaching that kind of edge of breakup thing, I guess, which for a pedal which has as much gain going on as something like the Drive Master really is no mean feat. Um, just to show you kind of what, roughly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. 
last but definitely not least, we've got the Shredmaster. Now, this is the only one which I guess is kind of totally new to me, to be honest. I've not had any prior experience with this, and it was a little bit out of my wheelhouse in terms of my understanding. Um, and remains to be so, I guess, to a degree with um, the contour control, especially further to the right. Um, further clockwise, you go seemingly getting into very much kind of scoop mid-range territory. But keeping it fairly central, we've got it at noon here. Again, it's just a great game sound. Sounds really cool. Again, very dynamic, cleans up beautifully. And much like the Drive Master and the Governor seemingly has the capacity to turn anything into a little bit of a kind of um, an unwieldy beast, I guess. So uh, clean tone. <laughs> In terms of how I've been using these, I guess obviously they're relatively new, but the Blues Breaker in particular has been a big part of my setup in some kind of derivation or not for the last, pretty much ever since I bought it, which I guess probably was the better part of 10 years ago at this point. Um, it's pretty much always been the first game pedal in my chain. Bizarrely then, somewhat counterintuitively, being used as a solo boost. Not in terms of level, but in terms of kicking any other kind of pedals that have been after that, with a little bit more gain, a little bit more output, I guess, maybe compressing the pedal that's later on, or depending on how much headroom that pedal has, maybe giving it a little bit more output. Um, but in some shape or form, the Blues Breaker has been a massive part of my setup for a very long time now. Set pretty much how you've seen it here, to be honest. It's never, I guess that's the kind of way I'm running things, is nothing is too drastic. There's not one pedal that changes anything markedly. I tend to run my amps clean and then use different gain stages for different sounds, different textures, or different moments and tracks. Um, so it tends to be different combinations of different pedals. And for me, in particular, that's where the Blues Break has always excelled. In terms of just enhancing your overall tone without clouding it or without imparting, I mean, take something like the Governor. Like I said, that's it's kind of forte is that it seems to have the capacity to turn anything into a bit of a JCM 800. Whereas the Blues Breaker, for me at least, has always been very complimentary of my kind of clean tone. It just enhances it, makes everything sound a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. 